Initially, the bond between her and her dog was unremarkable. However, as their bond deepened, peculiar occurrences began to unfold, leaving the husband bewildered. He observed his wife's dog trailing her into the bathroom, prompting him to embark on unraveling the mystery alone. As he heard the door click shut, he swiftly accessed the security app on his phone, completely unprepared for the revelation that would alter their marriage forever. David Nock had readily acceded to his wife Katie's desire for a dog. His lengthy office hours left her frequently alone while working from home. He perceived a dog as a source of companionship during his absence. Though newly wedded, the 29-years-old couple wasn't ready for parenthood, yet their Atlanta, Georgia abode felt somewhat desolate. Enter Bailey, Katie's one-year-old Australian shepherd, forging an instant connection. Bailey's loyalty and intelligence quickly endeared him to both Katie and David, becoming an inseparable part of their lives. David, an accounting consultant, devoted himself to providing Katie with her envisioned lifestyle. His joy stemmed from seeing her happiness, yet a disquietude crept in when he noticed her constant companionship with the dog. Could he be envious of a canine? Despite his demanding work ethic, David cherished every moment spent with Katie, relishing in her culinary creations and treasuring their shared time. However, he remained oblivious to her activities during his prolonged work hours. After months of relentless effort, David's diligence was rewarded with a promotion, affording him the luxury of reduced working hours and early homecomings. Eager to surprise Katie with the good news and celebrate together, he anticipated arriving home ahead of schedule. Nevertheless, he couldn't have foreseen the consequences of disrupting Katie's routine. David entered the house quietly, hoping to catch Katie off guard. He prayed that Bailey wouldn't spoil his plans by rushing to greet him. But when he found no one home, a sense of confusion washed over him. Where could she be? Then, the sound of the shower reached his ears, and he relaxed, berating himself for neglecting to check the bathroom. She hadn't vanished, she was simply showering. However, when he approached the bathroom, he heard a voice amidst the spray of water. It was Katie's voice, but the words were indistinct. Who could she be talking to? He strained to listen but heard only the rush of water. When it ceased, he called out to her, and there was a sudden crash, followed by a muffled response. Concerned, he asked if she was okay, and she assured him she'd be out shortly. As she emerged, accompanied by Bailey, her demeanor appeared shaken. Had he startled her so greatly? Why are you home so early? She inquired, and David shared the news of his promotion, but her subdued reaction puzzled him. His curiosity piqued, he questioned her about the voice he'd heard in the bathroom. She evaded his gaze, attributing it to talking to Bailey. Doubt nodded him, why would she need protection in their own home? Worried about her sense of security, David resolved to take action. However, his attempts to reassure her only raised more questions. When he pondered her unease, he wondered why she hadn't confided in him earlier. He couldn't shake the feeling of unease, contemplating why she'd want Bailey to guard her while showering. The initial days of David's new job dragged on when he adjusted to his altered routine. However, Katie's insistence on taking Bailey into the bathroom continued, even with David at home. Her increasing distance left him grappling with doubt, exacerbated by subtle shifts in her behavior. She appeared preoccupied and anxious, neglecting simple tasks like bill payments and grocery shopping. After witnessing this behavior one too many times, David decided it was time to enhance their home security. He invested in a doorbell camera, not only to record anyone approaching the house but also to alert them to the front door's opening. He hoped this measure would ease Katie's mind, providing her with the ability to monitor any unwelcome visitors. However, it only served to deepen his concern and confusion. While at work the following day, David received an alert on his phone indicating that the front door had been opened. Checking the camera feed, he saw Katie leaving with Bailey on his leash, assuming she was simply taking the dog for a walk hours later, another notification signaled her return. 
Initially dismissing it as errands, David grew uneasy as this pattern repeated regularly. Where was she going for such extended periods during the workday? Refusing to be kept in the dark, David resolved to confront Katie that evening. Patiently waiting until she emerged from the bathroom, Bailey faithfully at her side, he demanded answers about her conversations inside. Katie's defensive response and growing irritation raised suspicions. It dawned on David that her silence wasn't avoidance but simmering anger. As accusations flew, David found himself on the receiving end of Katie's wrath. Hurt and confused, he left the bedroom, determined to uncover the truth. His resolve solidified overnight, prompting him to devise a plan. On his way home from work the next day, he stopped at a security store, purchasing a discreet surveillance camera. That night, while Katie slept, he clandestinely installed it in the bathroom, anticipating the clarity it would provide. Despite the running water, David listened intently as Katie and Bailey entered the bathroom the following evening. The couple's uneasy silence still hung in the air as they disappeared behind the door. With trembling hands, David opened the surveillance app linked to the camera, his heart pounding in his chest when he watched his life unfold on the small screen. Initially, the live feed revealed nothing out of the ordinary. Katie placed her phone on the counter before stepping into the shower, while Bailey settled nearby. Suddenly, Bailey approached the shower, and David heard Katie's voice amidst the spray, asking Bailey to fetch her towel. The clever dog complied, bringing her the towel. David observed when Katie sat on the floor beside the shower while Bailey retrieved something from the counter, right where Katie had left her phone. A surge of alarm gripped him as he recognized the item, a bottle of orange pills. His wife's weak voice broke the silence, thanking Bailey, who obediently lay down on her legs. As Katie took a pill, her body tensed with familiar anxiety, the same anxiety he had misconstrued as fear for her safety. In that moment, it dawned on David that she had been telling the truth all along. Bailey provided her not with protection from external threats but with a different kind of safety, a solace from her inner turmoil. Overwhelmed with guilt, David realized his suspicions had been unfounded. Instead of infidelity, his wife had been battling something alone, hidden beneath a facade of normalcy. His jealousy swiftly morphed into genuine concern for her well-being. As he grappled with these revelations, questions flooded his mind. Was she unwell? Was it serious? And why had she kept it from him? Anxiously, David awaited Katie's emergence from the bathroom. When she finally appeared, unsteady and vulnerable, he rose to support her, knowing that she could sense he had unraveled something significant. Though she knew him better than anyone, he realized he still only had a fraction of the whole story. Guiding her carefully to the bed, they sat down together, hand in hand, a silent understanding passing between them. Patiently, he waited for her to speak, to unravel the mystery that had eluded him for so long. She mumbled, I have a chronic illness. Bailey is my assistant's canine. He protects me. He is always with me because of this. Breath hitched in his throat when David felt a surge of knowledge sweep over him. He had been jealous of an animal actively assisting his spouse in overcoming her day-to-day -day challenges. Katie said steadily, it's called postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. When I move positions or stand for extended periods of time, my heart rate becomes erratic. Bailey is able to detect increases in it. She continued by saying that her numerous outings were typically for follow-up appointments with doctors or extra training sessions for her service dog with Bailey. She hadn't told him about it so he wouldn't have needless anxiety when he worked hard. Any resentment David may have had towards her was eclipsed by his remorse and anxiety. He promised her his undying support and determined to make her his top priority. He made adjustments to his work schedule, going to all of her doctor's appointments and devoting himself to thorough research to gain a thorough understanding of her situation. He developed a bond with Bailey based on their mutual love for Katie during this journey, which helped him to understand Bailey's significance in their lives. David made sure Bailey received extra treats when he got home as a small mark of appreciation for his steadfast loyalty to his family. 
David was thankful for Bailey's company during the times he couldn't be there. After watching the first story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Next, let's watch another similar story. When a canine intervenes to prevent the detachment of its owner from life-sustaining apparatus after weeks of reliance, pandemonium erupts. Medical personnel plunge into a state of frenzy confusion, perplexing doctors and unleashing chaos by the bedside. However, as the motive behind the dog's actions becomes apparent, a sequence of events unfurls, leaving bystanders stunned. Beneath the cold glare of fluorescent lights, the hospital chamber echoes with the clinical rhythm of machinery. Leonard is dead, only a shadow of the active person he used to be, and Quinta, his wife, is slumped next to him. Her eyes are blazing with suppressed tears, her shoulders slumping under the weight of grief. Quinta's stomach churns with dread as a doctor enters, clutching a clipboard that appears to contain a verdict, her fear growing with every step. The doctor starts, Mrs. Davis, it's time. Quinta looks up, frozen in fear when the doctor reaches over her husband's lifeless body, ready to turn off the oxygen. But before the doctor can do anything, a savage roar splits the atmosphere. Quinta's devoted German shepherd is standing at the foot of the bed, stiff and twitchy, his teeth bared in a nasty growl directed at the physician. Fear courses through Kina's veins, her once gentle friend has changed. Actually, the dog had been acting strangely for the past few weeks, which made sense considering the tragedy of the disaster that had completely destroyed their lives. The collision involved a regular Friday night journey that was cut short by tire screaming, blinding headlights, and finally darkness. In a sterile hospital room, Kinta awakens with an aching body and a foggy vision. The less fortunate Leonard lies in another room, deeply unconscious from terrible injuries. Over the next few days, Kinta's hopelessness grows with every hour that goes by. She spends her vigil beside Leonard's bedside in an agonizing state of silence, clinging to hushed stories, recollections, and prayers against an unwavering nightmare. It was then that he saw the doctor, surrounded and unkempt, two orderlies clumsily loitering in the hallway. Your dog won't let anyone near your husband, the doctor cried out. The doctor's grave voice reverberated across the hospital waiting room as Kina found herself rooted to a plastic chair. Kinta, he said, we must broach a difficult subject. Despite being familiar, the words gave her the chills. Dr. Evans went on, Leonard's condition stays stagnant. We've run out of possibilities. It's time to consider how good his life was. The euphemisms that were before concealed were now palpably palpable, since the idea of turning off life support and accepting death was too painful to consider. A primal scream pricked Kina's throat, but she could only let out a hoarse mumble, I can't not yet. With a sigh, the doctor showed a side of himself that lay under his polished exterior, a man burdened by the tragedies he saw every day. Max touched Kina's knee as though he sensed her distress, a ray of hope in the darkness. When Kinta and Leonard went inside Leonard's room together, Kinta's fingers took comfort in the velvety fur. She fell to her knees next to her husband and held his hand, pleading with him in silence. Please, Leonard, just give me a sign, show me you're still fighting. Max gave a gentle whine that caught their attention. The dog was lying close to Leonard, his soft breath a moving symbol of their shared devotion. Quinta experienced a sudden flash of insight during that moment of mutual surrender. If this devoted friend of Leonard's was willing to concede loss, was she adding insult to injury by holding on to hope? It was with heavy heart that she made her choice. Come on, Max, let's release your master once and for all. The documents she was holding felt like burning coals, consent forms, waivers, a long list of medical terms that added up to one final, irreversible result, life support being turned off. Her distinctive signature adorned the bottom of the page, while the nurses moved with practiced efficiency, silently marking the passage of time as they prepared. Each click of equipment and hushed conversation felt like a blow to Kina's already fractured spirit. Unable to watch yet unable to turn away, Kina felt a nurse's gentle hand on her arm, signaling it was time. 
she couldn't muster the words as the nurse disappeared behind the curtain. Kina let go a sob, a raw, primitive cry she was unable to control. She was expecting the machine to sound to signify that Leonard had been taken off life support, but instead she heard a roar, a primal, fierce wrath that split the air, not a human cry of agony. With a loud thump, Max, who had changed, leaped past Kinta into the end of the bed, pinning Leonard beneath him. The nurses gasped as Max hissed, flashing his teeth in the low light. Kinta sprang forward, reaching for his collar, but it was useless. One nurse cried out, Get him out of here! Kina struggled mightily, but Max stood his ground and stared at Leonard with a resolve not seen in weeks. The second nurse, her eyes wide with fear, whispered urgently, Wait, stop! Look at his chest! When she had promised, Leonard's chest gave a slight flutter under Max's fur. And then there it was, a weak gasp that was more like a rattling breath than anything else. The nurses looked at one other in confusion, then back at the monitors, then back at Leonard. It appeared unfeasible either a harsh twist of fate or a tired and desperate person's fantasy. Beneath the bed, Kina fell on her knees, stunned into stillness. She removed a stray strand of hair off Leonard's cheek with a shaky hand. Max moved just a little, but he still stood guard. A ray of hope broke through the mist of despair at that moment of miracle. A deep, nagging doubt that this was not the last chapter took root in her bones. Kinta was kneeling next to Leonard on the bed, while the nurses hovered around, keeping a silent watch. Her eyes went back and forth between the little elevation of his chest and the loyal sentinel, Max, standing watch over him. One nurse stammered, this can't be happening, as her colleague reached hesitantly for the brain monitor that was beeping. Now, the formerly brutally flat line danced crazily, faintly spiking with every forced breath Leonard could summon. He was not lost, awareness was regaining its hold. Suddenly there was chaos, one nurse running out of the room and the other transfixed, wide-eyed, a mixture of panic and wonder. Then, as if a switch had been flipped, the chief nurse's abrupt order to security, room 212, stat, broke the atmosphere. A muscular guard appeared in the doorway and pushed his way past the terrified bystanders in the hallway. The guard lunged at Max before Kinda could completely realize what was happening, and Max saw the new threat and acted quickly. His snarl turned into an enraged bark that knocked the guard to the ground. The head nurse yelled, Remove that dog at once! Her voice cutting through the growing din. Amid the tumult, Kina found her voice, a barrage of words driven by weeks of stored-up anxiety and adrenaline. Please just wait for a moment. I promise he won't hurt anyone. Leonard's breathing indicates that something has happened. Her entreaties were lost in the growing din. The guard, feeling more confident, reached out for Max again, this time wielding a baton. When hospital staff swarmed the doorway, their worried voices mixing into an incomprehensible noise against Leonard's heart monitor's persistent beeping, Max growled and snapped his teeth in warning. Max stood his ground the entire time, getting closer to Leonard. In a desperate attempt to defend his flock, his body transformed into a living shield, a demonstration of sacrificial devotion. As Kina saw, a strong wave of defense echoed Max's, a passionate need to defend her spouse and her family at any costs. The confusion was broken then by a loud gasp. It came from Leonard, not from Kinta, the nurses, or the throng of onlookers gathered at the doorway. For a split second, his eyes twitched open before closing once more. However, that instant proved to be sufficient, a tiny kernel of hope emerged amidst the rubble of hopelessness. A spooky silence fell over the room, drowning out the guard's harsh threats, the head nurse's reprimands, and even the incessant beeping of the machines. They all blended into an eerie hum in the background. Everyone froze in place as a ripple of astonished quiet radiated from Leonard's bed. Soon after, there was a flurry of activity when medical professionals barged into the room. Normally calm, Dr. Evans now had a look of sheer surprise on his face as he and his crew made their way to Leonard's bedside. 
wearing white jackets, they looked at him intensely and desperately, whispering incredulous and in medical terms. They had a steely determination about them. Dr. Evans whispered, impossible, almost to himself, his palm lingering over his wrist as though he was unsure whether to believe what his eyes were telling him. A pulse is present. Though weak, it does exist. Kina felt an odd mixture of horror and exhilaration. Was this all just a passing illusion, a terrible ruse executed by a fading body? Or was there a glimmer of life overcoming all obstacles? Max's body relaxed slightly when he poked Leonard's hand with his nose, his tail wagging nervously, and his faint whine relieved the strain. One of the doctors, when they carried on with their examination, put a stethoscope to Leonard's chest and looked at Dr. Evans, nodding tentatively and looking puzzled. It sufficed. A shudder went through the room, and then everyone's breath that had been held for far too long was released. The hospital rooms in the days and weeks that followed blended together with consultations and Max's reassuring presence all the time. Though excruciatingly slow, Leonard's recovery was nothing short of miraculous. With every tiny victory, a swallow, a grasp of Kina's hand, a muttered word, he defied every pessimistic forecast. Kina couldn't get Max out of her head. Was he just a loving dog, or was he the cause of this unfathomable sequence of events? The physicians, while cautiously optimistic, were completely perplexed and unable to provide an explanation. They spoke of it as a medical anomaly, a testament to the resilience inherent in the human body. However, they danced around the impossible question, avoiding the inquiry into Kinda's satisfaction. She delved deeper, scouring medical journals and online forums, immersing herself in discussions on K9 therapy and the remarkable abilities of dogs to detect subtle changes in their owner's health. These changes included shifts in scent, minute variations in body temperature, and other signals imperceptible to humans. One late night, nestled in the hotel waiting room, a particular study seized Quinta's attention. It detailed case reports of canines detecting deterioration in comatose patients. Her heart raced as she read on, the clinical language gradually unveiling a revelation that bordered on the plausible, yet perfectly aligned with the extraordinary event she had witnessed. Kina's hands trembled when she scrolled through the study, the words swirling before her eyes. Documented and peer-reviewed, she held in her hands case reports of dogs exhibiting peculiar behaviors preceding a significant change in their owner's condition. These behaviors ranged from heightened agitation and obsessive focus to a protective instinct, as if sensing impending danger to their beloved human. It was as if the scattered pieces of a fragmented puzzle suddenly clicked into place with astonishing clarity. Max's peculiar conduct over the past weeks now made chilling sense. He had been attuned to subtle signals, changes even the most sophisticated machines had failed to register. Max had sensed a shift that might have signaled Leonard's body fighting back from the edge of oblivion. Kinda bolted from the waiting room, clutching the printed study with an almost frenzied determination. Finding Dr. Evans amidst his rounds, she thrust the paper into his hands, urgency lacing her words as she implored him to read it. She elucidated her theory, observing the doctor's countenance shift from initial skepticism to a semblance of wonder. The interns leaned in, their fascination mingled with disbelief. When Dr. Evans completed the first paragraph, a stunned silence pervaded the bustling hospital hallway. Kina discerned a flicker in their eyes, the tiniest spark of impossible hope beginning to dawn against all odds. Leonard's recovery was not a fairy tale ending, the road ahead stretched long, fraught with physical therapy and the lingering shadows of his ordeal. However, Quinta's gaze now bore a resolve not born of false optimism but of unwavering certainty that they would confront the challenges together. The burden that had once crushed her spirit had lifted, not entirely, but enough to breathe. Max, the unlikely hero, lay contentedly beside Leonard's bed, his vigilant presence a constant. Their tale bore witness to the extraordinary connections that transcend mere words, a love story, yes, but also a testament to the boundless devotion that defies all boundaries, a bond immeasurable. After watching this story above, do you have any thoughts? 
feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Next, let's watch another similar story. As a dog unexpectedly ran inside the bustling hospital, the personnel reacted with horror and attempted to chase it away. One nurse, though, ventured forward and broke down in tears when she saw what the dog was eating. Jack the dog set out on his daily breakfast adventure at about six in the morning. He walked toward the trash cans behind the line of eateries on Main Street in Brunswick, New Jersey, preferring the early hours to avoid human intervention. Although Jack had no personal hatred for others, his nine years of homelessness had made him cautious of their potential for abuse and disregard. Still, he was grateful to them for their regular food crumb disposal, it was a lifesaver for him. Jack's nose perked up among the bins when he noticed a light human fragrance coming from behind an old blanket leaning against the brick wall. The smell unnerved him, yet something about this scent was different, so he had to look into it more. His gut told him there was something weak and sensitive inside. Jack gingerly prodded the bundle, exposing a little, gesticulating form. Realizing how urgently help was needed, Jack took a crucial choice. He started his quest by softly holding the bundle in his mouth. Jack held the valuable cargo in his arms and considered what to do next. Aware of the early hour and the absence of human presence, he battled with the realization that he required human support. Jack realized how urgent it was when the little figure stirred again and decided to go for help from an odd building a few blocks away, where he sometimes foraged for food. When Jack got closer to the busy building, where people were present day and night, his instincts were confirmed. In a matter of minutes, when he turned the last bend, the sight of many people validated his suspicions. While some people ran through the sliding doors, others lingered in the parking lot. Amid the chaos, a big truck approached from his left, its lights flashing red and sirens honking. Jack reacted quickly, racing for the sliding doors and scurrying into Brunswick Hospital. Inside, the atmosphere buzzed with activity. Shift changes loomed, and a patient on a gurney was wheeled into an emergency room. Meanwhile, a nurse at the counter urgently paged the ER doctor. Spotting Jack, her reaction was immediate, her demeanor tensed, sensing an unwelcome disruption. Hygiene concerns aside, a dog in the ER spelled trouble, a disturbance she couldn't afford on her watch. With determination, she stepped forward to shoo Jack away, barely sparing a glance at the bundle in his mouth. Instinctually, Jack contemplated abandoning the bundle and retreating. However, a compelling urge led him to seek another human. Evading the woman's attempts to drive him off, he darted into a nearby kitchen. Three women sat inside, engrossed in conversation over coffee. Initially unnoticed, Jack soon became the target of their attempts to usher him out, mirroring the nurse's actions. However, amidst the commotion, the bundle in his mouth stirred once more, prompting Jack to cast a hopeful glance at the third woman. Observing him with a quizzical expression, she rose from her seat and approached with gentle reassurance. Jack sensed a kinship in her demeanor, a stark contrast to the others. Welcoming her closer, he allowed a bond to form, trusting her as he never had before. With undivided attention, Jack gently placed the bundle on the floor, stepping back as Angelina Potter, a seasoned member of Brunswick Hospital staff for nearly a decade, focused on the unprecedented scene unfolding before her. Recognizing the significance of the dog's behavior, she observed his protective stance, interpreting it as a plea regarding the bundle in his mouth. Assessing the dog's unkempt appearance, indicative of a stray, Angelina balanced caution with urgency, knowing she must act swiftly to tend to the mysterious bundle. Approaching with measured steps, she maintained a calm demeanor, speaking softly to reassure the wary dog. Sensing his cooperation, she knelt beside the bundle, her heart swelling with emotion when she uncovered the unexpected contents, a fragile newborn, barely clinging to life. Swiftly springing into action, Angelina directed her colleagues to summon a doctor, conveying the critical condition of the infant. With practiced hands, she initiated life-saving measures, her touch gentle yet determined as she endeavored to revive the tiny, blue-skinned infant. 
Though the infant's response remained elusive, Angelina drew hope from the faint heartbeat, signaling a fighting chance. Upon the doctor's arrival, she relinquished her position, allowing him to continue the urgent medical intervention. Exhaling a sigh of relief as the medical team whisked the infant away, Angelina redirected her focus to Jack, acknowledging his heroic deed with words of praise. Extending her hand in a gesture of gratitude, she approached the remarkable dog, seeking to offer comfort and recognition for his extraordinary act. Though unaccustomed to such gestures, Jack sensed the genuine kindness emanating from Angelina, allowing her touch and basking in the warmth of her appreciation. Little did Jack know, this encounter would mark the beginning of a profound bond, forever altering the course of his life as he ventured into a future intertwined with Angelina's unwavering compassion. Recognizing that earning Jack's trust was paramount to their future relationship, Angelina focused on building rapport with the dog. Jack, in turn, had already made up his mind that this human would be his ally. As Angelina tenderly rubbed his ears, she noted his favorite spot, eliciting a contented response from Jack. Observing his attentive demeanor when she prepared to leave, Angelina invited him to join her, a silent agreement understood between them. Three months later, profound transformations had occurred for Jack, the rescued baby, and Angelina herself. Having welcomed Jack into her home permanently, Angelina marveled at the dog's seamless adjustment to his newfound forever home. However, the joyous surprises did not end there. Jack's excitement knew no bounds when Angelina returned home one evening, cradling a familiar bundle in her arms, the same infant he had rescued from the alley behind the Italian restaurant. Seated together, Angelina held the infant while Jack nestled at her feet, a living testament to the extraordinary bond forged through bravery and compassion. Reflecting on her once solitary existence, Angelina marveled at the unexpected family she now cherished, all thanks to the selfless actions of a remarkable stray dog. As for how one would approach the situation differently, Angelina's compassionate response undoubtedly yielded life-changing results. While others may have been inclined to shoo the dog away from the hospital premises, Angelina's empathy and understanding paved the way for a heartwarming tale of redemption and connection. After watching the stories above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's stories. See you next time.